capable uh, speaker. My name is Jacob Owari, and uh, it's in my territory that uh, the log is occurring. So uh, I was the one uh, that was said uh, before the court uh, in order to protect the territory, the animals, the way of life. Pretty much what Michelle said. Yeah. But the thing was, you know, in the court, the law and the company wanted uh, to keep cutting. And uh, the federal, uh, uh, provincial government agreed. And with uh, the band council interjecting, is that they interjected that uh, there should be an harmonization process to go on so the uh, logging company should, could continue just as long as the harmonizing measures were implemented. But that's been 20 years that the people have been trying to do harmonizing measures through the trilateral agreement. And every year, families, individual territories have been eaten away just the same. So this, this process started in 1991, where the beginning of a uh, community split began. And the reason why was integrated resource management plan. When the people worked on that trilateral agreement, they wanted social harmonization, not just for the native people, but for industries and society in general. Yeah, so we could benefit from the forest, native as much as the white people. And that's what we put before the court, that the people wanted uh, to keep their destiny. They, they want their vision to live off the land. To teach their children what they have lost through boarding school. I had done the same thing I had lost. So when I became a teacher, I taught academic education. Until Grandpa told me I should learn the education system of our people. That set me back a few years on my teaching career. I took a sabbatical in 84. And I started, started, started uh, studying what was life like. Where I found food, clothing, shelter, medicine from my grandmother and the other, other elders. And for me, I've been working on this since, like I said, 84. And since 81, there has been a split where the community's been fighting together amongst each other. One that doesn't want any cutting at all, and the other one that wants partially cutting. I feel sorry for my uncle, whose our territory is already 80% cut and they want to go cut there some more this fall.
So I've been Protestant since 91. First time was in 91 with the council to start the cutting to get an agreement set in place. And the agreement that uh, the people believed was that uh, it would create a partnership. What, what you might call a confederation you know, between two nations. So they could live with each other you know, in respect to the resources that's laid out on the land. People were happy. Until they seen that their territory wasn't protected anymore. Even the sacred areas that were circled out weren't protected. I had marked out a lot of sections on my grandmother's territory, my uncle's territory, my dad's territory. Wherever I have been, I've covered pretty much 50,000 square miles on Snowshoe since I, was, since I quit school when I was 14. Some places a bicycle, but I've walked it on. Since 91, they've been asking for 400,000 square meters of wood every year. And every time that the government logging company or the trilateral office shows the people what needs to be cut, they just show them the yearly cut. So it doesn't look like much on a map. But when you put 20 years together, that's when you start to feel the pain. That's when you start seeing the animals disappear. And for every lawn that, it, that has been cut, has been monoculture with uh, jack pine, which eradicates the other creatures that used to live on that land. There's no more food source for the other animals. So, in a way, the people out of the land have been fighting their own council, trying to get support, protection, you know, guidance, so they could properly manage their territory for the children. That's why I've been standing. I don't ask for support anymore. I need the people to stand up. Because if they don't protect the nature right now, ecology or any other thing, it's your children that's going to suffer. The trilateral agreement needs to be amended, changed. So it could protect what the people are crying for. Not to try to cut down some more on their territory. Because that's what's happening. We don't want no more cutting. That's all there is to it. We don't want no mining. Because it's going to poison our water. 
We want to do copper. That's where you get arsenic. And that's going to run into the water. The territory, the forest is going to be completely changed. The hunting industry has been going for the last 50 years. And every time they open a territory, the more moose goes up. The more road they create, the more it disappears, the faster it goes. They claim they have 80,000 fishermen a year in the park. That's 10 fish of each species that's going on. What we used to find, big fish in the rivers, they're just small fish now. The area, some areas where there was Rabbits, there's none anymore. The people of the land is one thing. People that live on a reserve is another thing. When you cut down the trees, out in the woods. It's like taking all the stores out of auto. No more groceries, no more medicine, no more clothing, no more shelter, material to make shelter, no more tools. That's what happens to the people of the land. On a reserve at least they get grants to do little projects. I will stand with the people of the land because that's what I am. I live all my life out in the woods. And when I see that Logging company coming. It's like they're coming to bash my store, my resource center, my history, my culture. I pray. I pray that one day we might succeed in understanding one another. That we gotta do something for one another. If we say we wanna support one another, then when we continue taking, buying more cars, buying more gas, buying more electricity, buying more and more. We don't seem to have enough. We don't seem to realize that every time that you know, we buy a new thing, that it comes from Mother Earth. As my grandmother used to say, you know, just a shirt. You know, if it has a rip on it, it's supposed to grow old with you. Just because it's got a, a little stain on it, we throw it away. We don't know when to quit. We gotta start realizing that. For example, I don't buy clothes from the stores anymore. I but get it from my second-hand stores. And I wait till they fall off of me before I throw them away. So I don't even try to use them. 
as much as possible. But one thing for sure, I will stand for what I believe that nature has got to continue existing for the future generation and I will stand that way. Yeah. I will do the best I can.